home brew beer from Christmas is getting a bit low now, but I'm sure I can work without it. It's just a nice extra refreshment for a while. Um, now, many times in life, all of us, I think, um, will find other artists that we very much admire. I've been uh, certainly uh, stimulated and motivated by many from the past, including, of course, the Impressionists and Monet and so on. But, of course, there are many recent ones as well. And I must admit, I've come across one in the last couple of years that uh, I very much like his work. I'm sure many of you have seen him, um, Hashim Akib. And uh, I'm going to do a demo down south shortly, and I know that they've actually had this uh, artist demonstrating for them. Um, now, the thing with that is, uh, it's good to see other people whose work stimulates you. Obviously, sometimes I see work and I think, oh God, that's awful, and it works on the opposite. That's one of the reasons I used to like going to the Royal Academy Summer Exhibition, because I'd see a lot of work that was very, very good, and I'd think, in my own opinion, um, it was so good that I could match it myself or do better, and I thought, oh, might as well give up. Then I'd see work that I thought was just very stimulating, I thought, well, that's, that, that gives me some ideas, I want to go and paint. Either use those ideas, or incorporate the techniques into my own. And then I'd see a lot of, fortunately, I'd see a lot of rubbish work, and think, well, how on earth did that get in? Mine should have equally got into this exhibition or whatever. Um, so you don't feel so bad about yourself, which is nice, at least sometimes, isn't it? Otherwise, just all give up. Um, but in this case, with uh, Hashim, I must admit that I do like his very loose style and the bright, vibrant colours. And the other thing that he's doing is managing to get such vibrant effects with heavy um, body acrylics. I have tried a little bit of them. I tried to get hold of some yesterday, but uh, they're not easy to get hold of, in fact, uh, from the stockists. So I'm going to have to send off for some. In the meantime, though, I like this idea of um, using it like oil paint and working up from the darks to the lights. I tend to work from medium tones and then go outwards. So what I'm going to do now is have a bit of fun and explore using his techniques and his stimulation in my own work. And, uh, and I'm going to incorporate or let that become evolve, help my own involvement, which we've all got to do at times, I think. We should all be aware of what's on around us, not just be totally, totally alienated and not move forward. So that's what I'm going to do now then, is I'm going to try some little tree scenes and so on, some woodland scenes and uh, go into city scenes and all sorts of things here using this flat brush technique and incorporating it with my own. I may well still use some of the roller techniques with it because we're not going to copy somebody else, we're just going to take what we see from them and see how it can relate to our own work and how it might stimulate us to expand our own work. In the same way as I've said to you about using photographs of other people's, there is no copyright on somebody's photographs if you're taking them from the internet and so on, providing that you're working from them and not copying them absolutely directly. So you're not taking the photograph and reproducing it as a Christmas card, you're taking it and you're reproducing it as a painting, therefore it's going to be different. Obviously I prefer to use my own photographs and do as much as possible because I think it's a more creative process and uh, I feel much happier about that. But I've got some lovely ones of my own here, which I've taken, there's a nice one there. And I've got some lovely fun ones here which I think are very close to his style. We've got a nice one here, for instance, a woodland scene, um, autumn scene. I've got these rather nice ones, which I want to do in both. Now, in this case, in this series, I'm going to do um, one with the with the sheep style, um, using the acrylics. I'm going to do the other one with watercolour, just to show the differences that we can do. And that's the thing. I'm always a person for saying I like to try and choose the best medium and method for the subject. So, you know, we are choosing, for instance, that one I could do with my rollers, or I could do with his technique with the flat brush. And this one as well, this is rather fun, I might try that one on one of the 2030 canvases. I'm not going to do many huge canvases. I am going to try a, a London nighttime scene, you know, looking down over the city, I think, on a very large canvas for fun, using this loose technique. Um, one of the other things to admire about his work is that uh, he's doing very loose drawing as I do to start with. But remember that drawing isn't just with line, drawing is also with shape. And when he's painting, You'll notice that he's actually drawing with that paint the whole time. He's building up his dark areas and cutting into them and cutting in and drawing actually with the lights as much as the darks and then gradually working up those shapes. So he's a very skilled draftsman actually as well. It's not just a matter of um, putting shapes together and it just happens. I think this is what people, um, can, where people can go wrong. Uh, it's often better in a, a loose painting to start with a fairly tight drawing so that you can work into it. He doesn't. He starts with a loose drawing and he's skilled enough to be able to work um, loosely and tighten up afterwards, which many of us can't do. So this is something I'm going to be doing a bit of as well at the moment and see how it goes for me. <clears throat> so again, don't be uh, against being stimulated by other artists and other people around you, as hopefully you aren't by me even. It's nice to feel that um, the work I'm doing has stimulated many of you to trying new things in different ways, and that's why I'm sharing. 
because I get so much pleasure from painting, I get so much joy from painting, and, uh, and I know many of you do, and I, it's nice to feel that maybe I'm sharing that joy with you, and you're continuing with the things I'm showing you, into developing your own work further. Some of you might just copy some of it directly, but others will take it and incorporate it within your own, as I do by looking at other artists. It may be I only see one or two paintings by one artist that I like, but those couple of paintings might have something in them that just stimulate me and get me going to paint something new or try a different way. So let's try a few paintings now uh, with this other style, using it, incorporating it, and uh, see how it works in with mine. It should work very closely because the work I did in the Secret series using the sponge rollers was very much in akin to a keep. So there we go. Well, I noticed that he had a round palette with all of his paints and so he could dip directly into them. I'm going to just continue with my standard one. And I've got a set of um, my flats here. In fact, I've been using these on my watercolour brushes because I use flats quite a lot with doing dry brush work in those. And we're going to actually have a go later at using a similar style to his in watercolour, <clears throat> just by building up these shapes and lights and darks. But we'll have to work with the watercolour technique with that. But that's something to play with later. <clears throat> As I was saying, I've got these flat brushes here, uh, one and a half inch, but I've got this um, one and a quarter here. Now this is a standard paintbrush from uh, an ordinary paintbrush shop, I'll see which one, but two letter one. Um, and the point is that the feeling of it is almost the same as this, and it's about a fraction of the price. So I think we need to be aware of the fact that there will be many brushes that we can find um, that are used for just decoration, which might well suit us for doing acrylic painting, and I have actually been using this in one of the large paintings earlier. So it's, it's to be aware that uh, it may not uh, have to break the piggy bank um, to, 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 to buy some brushes that will suit for this style. So what we want to do is start with um, the darks, and we're going to work up the darks of this painting, um, almost in a, a, an impressionist style. It's slightly cubist, it's slightly impressionist, pointillist, with very large strokes. And you're going to work the background up and, um, and mix some of the colours together actually on the brush as we go along, um, slabbing them on and then um, working the lights in between afterwards and then I'll finish up with finer brushes just to do some of the tricks. Not, it's quite a fun one to do, there's, a lot of, uh, there's no leaves on this one at all so it'll be quite interesting to see how it goes. So what I'm going to do then is, uh, no drawing at all in this case, uh, because it's such a small painting I don't think I really need to draw, I'll take my um, one of the larger flaps I've got here and start to put much water on at all because we're going to work with quite thick heavy paint. Um, I'm going to straight away take some very deep purple and I'll just mark out just basically where things are going to go. This is such a simple composition. Um, in fact, because it's so simple, it can be complicated. It's a bit like drawing an egg in a pine cone. Which would you rather do? You might think the egg is simpler, so you do the egg. But when it actually comes down to making a painting out of it, it can be quite difficult to do something with something more simple. When you've got something more complicated, you can grab hold of it. Lighting up. And I'm not putting on a ground. I sh and some of the paintings I'm going to do, I'm going to put a ground on. Something else he's been doing, um, which is rather fun. But I'm not going to do that. Um, I think this the thing about all of this is to have fun, isn't it? I mean, the, the, we're here to, to enjoy <coughs> painting. Now, we're going to be cutting into these, so it doesn't matter if we go slightly over in size. There's quite a few artists I can think back on that have had quite strong effects. I mean, Hazel Sowen in watercolour was another one. Love her nice, vibrant, fresh watercolours. Um, <laughs> I would like to think that hopefully I've had some effect, well, I know I have on, on one or two artists who've written to me, at whatever level, and uh, they've enjoyed my, some of my ways of working and taken those on. I think people get too jealous about things sometimes, you know. Uh, let's get that lovely blue going on down there. And of course you can use the brush. I, mean, I, I, I favour, as you know, I favour filberts because of the round um, edges. You've got more control. Um, on softer edges, but equally this technique using the flat has tremendous advantages as I hope you're starting to see. Really push the colours, that's one thing I noticed when he's working from a photograph, the guy is really pushing colour, he's really feeling for these colours here and uh, you better find them as well. If we're not quite right with our drawing we can come back and we can change this drawing remember. Um, we're not stuck with anything we do, by any means. 
And you're doing this, way, this very loose way of working is one that suits me well because I've used it with oils <coughs> in many years past, so I'm aware of it. And I want to um, work up some of these branches <coughs> here. I've got to leave these darks behind for the branches as well, so that we're going to uh, paint the light around them. So it's almost like a design at the moment, isn't it? We don't want to use pure white at any time, we're always going to have a little bit of colour going on in our, our lights. So let's take a very light cream now. This, this is where I need the heavy body really and I haven't got it. Um, a good teacher and a good artist will show their pleasure in what they're doing because they need to enthuse you. It's having a lot of strings to your bow that you can shoot differently with. Uh, You know, you, you need to, uh, I feel you need to have, I don't advice, but I feel you need to have as many different ways of painting as possible for whatever mood you're in or wish to do. So a nice chunky bits of colour, decide what colour you're going to have and put it on. You can always blend it a bit as we come down. Down to the next brush down now, it's uh, dried out quite a lot, do enough to work on I think. And uh, we'll start mixing our lighter colours. And once I've got these established and in, we can start to look to the pinker and cool colours as well. It's easy to get stuck in just staying with one colour or mixing, just trying to mix one colour, but we've got to play with uh, broken colour here, so we need to find the warms and cools. I'd rather use a pointy brush now. Or a fill that even because it gives me a more of a tip. And I need to come back with a small brush and just pick up some of these light areas, clean light areas again. I was going to use some heavy body yellow actually because I have got some for this job, but I probably won't need to. I haven't been building up the textures as much as he has because I simply don't have that heavy body colour. I'm just really trying to pick these lighter colours. The thing is, I haven't got uh, this heavy colour, so this colour is tending to sink in. We've really got to hammer on with some of these opposites in colours in here as well. Push, push, push all the time. So, I think we've almost reached where we're going to reach to with this today. And I think then, for a quick study, just showing how these marks go, should be about it. Really try and just see that colour there. Just want to go back into it now and just darken up some areas which have got a bit lost. Spring morning, some sunshine again. Nice to see some blue sky. It cheers me up so much. I need light and colour. Right, moving on from this film then, it was quite interesting and I think successful in one way that it just showed how these cheaper acrylics have not got the body that the oil paints have and possibly the heavy body acrylic has. Just to do a little test as well. What we're going to, have to do first of all is go back on the painting we've just done. And if you look at when I've put the paint on directly, the colours are right, they're thick, they're bold, but as they're drying out, they're sinking in, or they are just literally vanishing, um, becoming transparent, um, just disappearing. And I've found this quite often with using these acrylics when I'm working over a darker ground. You don't realise at the time, you put them on, it looks right, but they're gradually just vanishing back as they dry. Um, you don't realise until you put more colour on, you think there's something not right here, the values aren't right. You put more on and they're there again and then they gradually disappear again. So they have their uses and that they do blend in. You've got to keep building them up. So I think I'm going to have to aim, I'm going to have to work more towards these heavy bodies. So if we go back in the painting we've just done here, here's where I put them on nice and fresh. Now you see where I've got them on there, they're nice and bold, bright, as I intended. But if we look at the painting later on, it's very subtle. 
but they've disappeared. The, the values have gone right down to about a quarter. Um, so obviously these, these other acrylics haven't, haven't got that consistency, that heavy body, that intensity that I require, which I need. This is a very interesting uh, case in point, um, and that, this is one of the reasons this painting hasn't worked as well as I would like, because I wanted those square shapes, those impressionist shapes of bold colours to vibrate and be clear, and they've just gone back into little brush strokes and blending in, which is my older style. Let's just take some heavy body acrylic, let's take some yellows, uh, of the heavy body and of an ordinary acrylic and place them together on some dark card and just see how they go on fresh and how they dry and how they disappear. Then we'll go back to a painting I did last summer in uh, Cruz where I painted the sunflower field and I could not get those bright yellows for exactly the same reason with acrylic when I was painting out on plein air. I had to go home and then repaint those flowers with oils to get that intensity of the yellow I needed on the petals and it just changed the whole painting. So it's, it's a very good point in question, isn't it? Um, so here you see the, the sunflowers when I first painted it. And then we go back and we look at it when I worked on the studio and put the brighter oil paints on top. So there's no problem with my painting with oils directly, except that um, I, I'm not able to do the same techniques. Um, I've got to place them straight on, I can't glaze over, I can't work over as quickly. That's the beauty of the acrylics, is we can work over the textures, they dry very, very much more quickly. So we're going to have to experiment with these heavy body colours. Of course I can do acrylics and then I can work oils over the top, so I can get my underpainting done very quickly with the, with, the, with the acrylics, and then we can paint oils over acrylics. Maybe you can't do it the way around, you can't put acrylics over oils, or you shouldn't do, because they can lift off. But you can put oils over acrylics. So there we are, there's the difference. Let's just do that little experiment now then with the, with the heavy body colour and the same colour then again uh, with an ordinary thinner acrylic and just see what difference there is when they dry. Right, what I've got here then, I've painted some deep violet on here and already you can see the black where I painted a bit thinner is drying out there almost semi-transparent as it is so I put some cheaper black on and some um, deep violet you can see where it's thinning out here. I've got some heavy body acrylic here which is the cadmium yellow and some heavy body um, system 3 process yellow got some A2 there cadmium yellow light which is very similar to the process yellow and I've got some cadmium yellow in the chroma A2's there so we'll try the, the two chromas out and see how they do. They shouldn't be too bad actually because they're slightly better paint. We've also got some slightly cheaper paints over here the graduates and um, the Windsor & Newton Galeria which is quite nice paint. Um, we'll see how that I know that rose has been giving me problems. It does go on lovely and bright, but it does thin out. And we'll try some, um, again, cheaper uh, cadmium red there. And see how that comes out, scarlet. Well, that's quite interesting to see how even the violet here, has, uh, the purple has, has gone much lighter in some areas when it's dried, and how this dark, which is uh, the black, which is thinned down a fraction, has completely bleached out already with those other paints. I had to put it on quite thickly to get a, a nice dark colour here with the black. Let's try then a bit of the um, cadmium yellows now first. We'll just literally put a bit on the side of the paper and this is quite a nice, oops, this is quite a nice thick paint actually. Let's see how this dries. So this is the, the A2 chromas which are quite nice paints. And so you can see it's quite jelly-like so I'm putting it on fairly thickly then. Now that isn't too bad. I thin it down a bit here. Let's see how it dries. So I'll make it a bit thinner here. So that's the chroma. Now that's that's on very thickly there, quite impasto, and then painted a bit thinner here. That isn't bad actually. That's um, quite a nice texture. I'm just going to use a little bit of water with that and just thin that down so we get a glaze. And we'll just see how the glazes work. Take some of that there and just glaze it down. We'll see how they dry out. Now let's take some of the heavy body. Put that next to it. It's a little bit brighter for a start. Try that brush out. I'm going to start with a nice dry brush. Plenty of paint on. It feels it's not bad. Again, nice and thick. It's going on very nicely here. I'm going to thin it down a bit there. Then I'll use a little bit of water on the on the side here to do a thinner glaze to see what happens. So that's glazing it down. Now I'll 
try some System 3 process yellow next to that. Again, it's nice and heavy. Now, this is an interesting because, like lemon yellow, it tends to be quite transparent. Now, this is the acrylic, the um, System 3 heavy body, and like lemon yellow, it's quite transparent, quite thin. And I'm finding that that actually, I'm going to be interested to see how this dries out because that is going on quite, quite transparently there. It's okay if I use it very heavily, but it's going on quite transparently there. And if I make that thinner here. So certainly the process yellow is nowhere near. On the System 3, it's not as heavy as the acrylic heavy body was, as the acrylic colour heavy body was. I'll try a little bit of the A2 now. That's quite nice, but very similar, quite quite um, transparent. <clears throat> this is the uh, cadmium yellow light with the A2. I'll thin that down a bit. Now, the colour, some of the colours I have been having a problem with, um, which have been bleaching out or going transparent. Uh, the Opera Rose, for instance, here, these lovely, bright, vibrant colours. Let's try some of that. And that is, when it's heavy like that, it's fine. But if, as soon as we thin it down, it starts going transparent and very quickly, look. So that's quite a... Let's see how that lightens up. We'll thin that one down a bit. We'll try some... <coughs> permanent rose from the graduate range. So this is a permanent rose from the, grad, from the graduate range, quite thickly. It's not bad stuff. Thin it down a bit. And finally we'll do a little bit of crimson from a cheaper range. That gets some out. There we go. So crimson goes on quite well, but look how thin that is. I think this is going to dry out. That's almost disappearing already. So that's a crimson from a cheaper range. Now we'll just see how those dry. So we've got the photograph of those now as they are. And we'll pick up those when they're dry. Well now this is rather interesting isn't it? You can see now how the uh, some of the paints have almost completely disappeared and this is the problems I've been having here is that when I've been using these bright colours over a darker ground and so on they just, you think they're on alright but they just totally vanish so unless you've got a very heavy area like that these ordinary acrylics are just disappearing so you think you've got a nice coat on but they've just vanished let's go backwards and forwards again you'll see what I mean and even these yellows, I mean look how thin that is if I've been putting that on top of sunflowers and so on so the heavy body there has certainly shown better it hasn't dried transparently, it hasn't disappeared and the heavy body here, the same definitely shown as better so yes, the heavy bodies are coming out, although it's a bit thin there so there we have the uh, heavy body system 3 and there we have the heavy body Krilla which does actually seem to be the, the better of the two. Still not really that happy with it. I really do need to find some much richer colours. Let's see if we can. 
I've decided when I got it back, although it's a nice soft painting, I really do want a little bit more zing in parts of the, the yellows on here. So I'm going to put some oils out onto a palette. And just yeah, right. well, I think that was a risk worth taking. It does seem to have worked. 